In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make dynamic weather terrain, and by that I mean terrain which changes based on essentially the season and also, as you can see here, the height of the terrain. So this is just snow. I've made a really simple kind of abstraction and generalization, so you can just cut out this and put it in your own project. Um, this is based on something I developed in my project, but it's so complicated and so intertwined with my code that it really wouldn't be easy for people to kind of understand that and to just transfer into their project. So if you like this, like and subscribe. So I just removed all the assets basically, so we just have the blank canvas to start again. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make a material. I'm just going to talk, call this terrain. And in terrain, I'm going to uh, create a, a texture sample. So you can just do that by T click, so press T and click at the same time. And we're going to get grass. And well, I'm just going to get text called, and this will make the texture slightly different sized. Uh, this is really just so you can see the example better. But for whatever you're doing, uh, just like this grass is just a proxy for whatever you're doing, whatever your main textures are. And then we're going to put this into a lerp, so a linear interpolation. And this goes into the base color. And then for our other node in our linear interpolation, for the other lerp, we're just going to have um, white. So what this does right now is it just lurps between white and the grass, doesn't really mean anything. So now we're going to have to do all our logic. So we're going to get an absolute, uh, just get a, world, world, get a world position. And then that's an absolute world position, yeah. And then we're going to have to do something called a mask. And we're going to do a component mask and we're going to mask B. So this world position is basically like an X, Y, and Z. And so R is X, G is Y, and B is Z. We're interested in the height primarily. And then what we're going to do from here is we're going to multiply it. So you press shift and you get your multiply thing and you do that. And now we're going to multiply it by something quite fancy. So we're going to go into here and we're going to make something in, I think, yeah, it is materials something called a material parameter collection and we're just going to call this to a material parameter collection and what this is is this is basically like a blueprint interactable variable that you can use that's universal and you can take that in your terrain value so we're just going to have our scalar here and we get so we're going to scale so that's a value that's like a number a float any floats from any number really, just any single number. And we're just going to call that season. And so we've done that. After that, we go back in here and we get a parameter. Uh, parameter. And we want a scalar parameter. No, that's not what's all right. Uh, I always forget how to get these. Um, Uh, so it is in, um, not here, in, oh, yeah, sorry, just forgot how to get that. So we just drag that in, and then we give you the season, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to power. So we're going to do by a power of two. This just makes it a little nicer. If you don't do that, it's not ideal. And after that, we're going to create ourselves a scalar... Um, parameter and we're just going to call that snow elevation and we're going to um, set that by default to minus 10 and we're just going to add these two values together then we're going to divide by uh, something I'm going to call um, snow sharpness or snow sharp and that will be at a value of 150 and that goes into there. Then I'm going to clamp. So what this does is it basically means it can't clamp just sets it to a certain value. So um, we we can create create a value called snow clamp, and we'll just set it to one. So that's the maximum. 
Then from Snow Clam, that goes into the alpha value here. And that should all be ready. And then we, what we next do is we need to create an instance. Now, I'm not actually really going to use this instance particularly, apart from put it onto the terrain. Um, now, the reason that is, is because um, I don't really need to modify the values because I have them set exactly as I want them, but you might need to. Um, so after that, we are going to have to do all the stuff that sets the value. So if, if we went into here, we could see that if we set it to 1, we get our snow. As we decrease it, we get less snow. Pretty simple. 1, lots of snow. 0, no snow. However, that does nothing. We'd have to set it manually in the editor. So we need to set it to a particular value. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Blueprints and our third person character Blueprint. Now, it doesn't actually matter what you use. You can use anything you want. But the reason I'm using this is because it's just there and easy to use. Obviously, don't put it in your third person character Blueprint unless you really want to do it. Um, again, this is just a proxy for whatever you want to do. I'm just teaching you how to do the theory stuff. And so I've already created a variable called Season. And we're just going to get that in and get that and add. So basically season is just how long the game's been running for. Um, this isn't actually how I do it in my game. I have like a complicated proxy that goes for all the seasonal actual in-game time, but that's because my game is like a complicated strategy game. So um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, then we're going to have to do some sinusoidal stuff, so a sine curve in radians, and we actually need to modify it slightly. So first, we need to get a subtract, and then we're going to multiply by pi, and that's a lovely function I actually recently found out about, and it just it's just multiplied by pi. I don't particularly know its reason for why it's a separate function to the regular multiply, and why you can't just take a pi, and it might be more efficient, so I'm kind of going with that. So I'm not the best source on this. And then we're just going to divide um, just by 1. I don't think, hang on, that does nothing yet. That's the point. Um, I'm using the division here is the period. So the longer, the bigger this number is, the longer the seasons will be. Um, and that's basically you're stretching out the sine curve. This, this thing here is. Uh, moving the sine curve, like left or right, or moving it slightly to the Think of right or something. Um, so it sort of lines up nicely. Then we're going to clamp. Now the reason we want to clamp, so clamp again, use the right clamp, is because sine curves, as you know, go into the negatives generally. And what we want is like when it would be in the negatives, we just want it to go to zero, so it's like the summer, and then it goes up when it's winter. And then we're going to set our scalar value here. So scalar parameter, um, get the correct thingy, and get the season, and do that. So once that's done, I believe we will be able to just hit play, see nothing's happening, and then the snow starts, and it's kind of around for a while. And I've made a mistake. I was very stupid then. As you can see, I said we were doing sign stuff, but in fact, I missed sign. Go to sign in radians, okay? Otherwise, you have like a sign time which won't work with the rest of the stuff, but uh, will take like it will take like six minutes to do a period, whereas this will take like six seconds. And so you see, it gets there, it appears, and then it disappears, and it will happen again. See. So, you know, this is really just a really good example of, it's really simple, you know, that's not very good snow, anything, it's just a good example, and then you can put this into your own game or your own project, um, but in general, you know, this is a way too primitive. My own version has, like, more parameters, it uh, takes in a certain type of noise and a few other things, and I'm going to add latitude as well. And to add latitude, you'd basically need to get the absolute world position I was talking about. 
and get another part of that component of that and then modify it by that as well. So thank you for watching, like and subscribe. And yes, I'm going to repeat that.